Hi, I'm Willa Douglas. Before I present my credo, I want to recognize the mentors who worked with us to express our ideas. Thank you. My name is Willa Douglas, and this is my credo. God, what is God? Who is God? All these questions run through my head every day. I don't believe that there is a bigger force directing our lives. God is a symbol that people look to when they're lost. It's our belief when we've lost all cause to believe. God is hope. God is life. But what happens when we die? Do we go to heaven or hell? Do we become something new? Or do we just stop? I want to believe that the spirits of the dead are still with us. However, I can't. I think more scientifically about this subject. I believe that when we die, we stop. I believe that everything happens for a reason. Every action has a reaction. I believe the purpose in life is to make a difference in the world, to make sad people happy, to make the sick healthy, and to make the poor wealthy. What helps me experience purpose and meaning in life is making people laugh, contributing to a win with a team, going to new places, and having fun. I feel most happy and fulfilled when I succeed in sports or when I'm engaged in the arts. I write songs, play the piano, sing, do musical theater, and photography. When I'm taking a picture or watching a beautiful sight, when I'm at a funeral or when I hear opera, I go into deep thought. When I'm watching a sunset or I come to a breathtaking waterfall, I fear, feel wonder and awe. Those moments are the moments I live for. My larger purpose is to make a difference in the world. I would like to be in the Peace Corps when I get older. I want to travel the world so I can get a better understanding of it. I want to hear the stories of people who have different life experiences and world views. I want to touch people's lives. I plan to be successful as a singer-songwriter. I picture myself on stage with screaming fans knowing every word to my songs. I pray for the day when I hear my song on the radio. I want to use that success to make a difference. I want to start a hospital for cancer patients. It would be called John T. Douglas Memorial Hospital. I would like to fund further research in finding a cure for cancer. I admire Niall Horan. He is part of the amazing music group One Direction. He perseveres and has so much fun doing what he loves. He doesn't usually get the solos in his group. However, he still has fun. This is what I admire about him, that he can get the most out of life even though he's not the biggest star. He doesn't care about getting all the leads. He only cares that he is performing and that he's with his best friends. Niall lives in the moment and is my inspiration. I also admire my dad. He lived every moment like it was his last. No matter what mood he was in, he always made people laugh. Never once did he let down his spirits, even though he had a lot to be down about. He lived to leave a lasting impression, impression on every life he crossed. He fulfilled this. He has left a big, bigger legacy than anyone I know. He has touched countless people's lives and will, re, will be remembered and loved by so many. I admire my brother because even though he is struggling, he is still persevering. What I like about my mom is that she knows how to make me feel better. I admire her strength through difficult times. Right now, I'm feeling weak and she is my net when I fall. My friends are a major contributor to where I am today. Without their love and support, I'd be lost. My best friend, Erin, has had one of the biggest impacts on my life. She has picked me up and dried my tears ever since we were two weeks old. She has demonstrated everything I admire in a friend. Something I look for in a friend is that they need to understand me. They also will have to be funny. I will need to feel comfortable around them. I don't want a friend who is too serious and worries too much. I want them to feel like they can talk to me. Friends are very important to me. While Aaron and I will always be best friends, a life partner is also important. I would like to be able to feel like myself around my life partner. I want him to be handsome but have a kind face. I want him to be generous. I want him to live in the moment because that's something I'd love to learn how to do. I would want him to act young and free and not worry about what other people think. He would have to be funny. Most importantly, I have to love him. I want him to be my other half. He also needs to love me too and treat me with respect. I believe that the majority of people my age are greedy and self-centered. 
I think that'll change as we mature. I think that the minority, which includes my friends, are good at heart, understanding, caring, and fun. However, I still think that some of the people in this world are consumed by money and hate. I know the difference between right and wrong because my parents taught me right from wrong. I get a feeling when it's wrong. I also think, would I like this to happen to me? If the answer is no, then I know it's wrong. I think cheating is only cheating yourself. I believe in fairness, justice, and equality. I think everyone should have to work for what they get. My community is very important to me. I do have a responsibility to my community. I believe that we have the responsibility to obey the rules, keep our streets clean, and support local vendors. I think that we should try to be kind to our neighbors. When I think of community, I think of my father. I think of how much he loved to help people and how he loved, to, how he loved assigning responsibilities to the people around him. One word to describe the relationship between my father and I is inseparable. We did everything together. He taught me everything I know. He is everything I am today. He died when I was 12 years old. This changed my life. Not only did I lose my dad, I lost my best friend. This event made me view the world differently. No one should take a day for granted. Always live every moment like it's your last one. However, I've also come to realize reality, growing up, and dealing with problems suck. I've woken up from being a kid and realized that life's not fair. Despite the hardships my family and I have had to face, his death made me stronger. Someone could easily take a turn for the worst after an event like this. However, my mom, my brother, and I plan to overcome this large bump in the road. I've learned to cherish the people around me and how to deal with the ups and downs of life. Life isn't easy, but life is what you make of it. My father's death taught me to turn lemons into maybe a little bit bitter, but still lemonade. And uh, I would like to thank Tara Webb Dewey for being an amazing mentor and helping me come of age. So thank you very much. Before I start, I would like to thank our coming of age teachers and all of you for showing up here today and supporting us while we figure out what we believe. My name is Eliana McLaughlin, and this is my credo. I believe that the purpose of life is to connect with people, to share our gifts with them while receiving the gifts that they have to give. Doing this requires a willingness to be open and bold in giving ourselves, and a compassion in our approach to understanding what life is like for others. I don't think that some people are inherently bad while others are inherently good. I think that the experiences we have and the people we know play a big part in how we turn out and that we all have the power to change. Therefore, we have a responsibility to be conscious about the way that we treat other people and know that we have the chance to make a difference in their lives. Paul Shane Spear said, As one person, I cannot change the world, but I can change the world of one person. I want to live my life in a way that allows me to have a positive impact on others. The qualities I most admire in people and I seek to emulate are compassion, a sense of equality, loyalty, a free spirit, bravery, trust, empathy, and the ability to let loose and have fun. I think it is important to approach life with curiosity, to seek every opportunity we have to learn, and to do the things that make us happy. I believe that the human brain is the most powerful force in the world. A single thought can change the world for good or for bad. We have the, the ability to create the things in which we believe. When I look up at the sky and think about all the other people in the world that can see it too, people of different races, who speak different languages, who believe different things, who love different people, and who have completely different thoughts on life, I am struck by a sense of awe and wonder. If we can put aside all our differences and look deeper, we will find that we are all just people who share this beautiful and interesting world and that we are all connected. Twice a year, I participate in a dance performance with the Philadelphia Dance Theater. During the weeks leading up, to the dancers experience high-strung emotions that often lead to harsh behavior towards one another. On the day of the performance, we participate in a warm-up class. We all move in unison and a peace settles over us as we do this thing that is second nature to us all. 
At the end of class, the director of the company asks us to gather on stage for what we call the Merit Circle. We join hands and get a pep talk in which those five words are said that everyone needs to hear. It's going to be okay. The dancers apologize to one another for anything that they have done so that before the performance begins, we can all feel closer. Then we pass the merit by squeezing each other's hands till it makes it all the way around the circle. It's a way of saying we are here for you and is the beginning of a deep connection that lasts until the scream of relief accompanying the end of our performance, if not longer. I value this sense of connection and the sense I get when I dance of living 100% in the moment because a moment may only last a second and then it is gone. Life is a collection of those moments and although they may not last forever, the memories will. Thank you. I get the box. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Um, hi, my name is Maya Salvacion, and this is my credos. Religion isn't something that you should fear. It's something that should bring you comfort. People shouldn't force their religions upon someone else because people have the right to their own beliefs. Many people feel oppressed or even excluded because of their beliefs, but I believe that there is something that connects us all that is not necessarily God, but is something that's special and makes us all unique. The day of silence at my school is one day in the year that is set aside in protest for people who feel oppressed or silenced by their families or community. We were not allowed to have any communication whatsoever. No texting, no talking, no pantomiming, or anything. And even if we wanted to ask a question, we had to keep it to ourselves. During that time, I was thinking a lot about what I hold dear and how hard this must be for people who have to go through this silence every day because of their beliefs or who they love. Since then, I felt a whole new connection with my friends who were also silent that day because we were able to support each other even though we weren't able to communicate. What I've taken away from, um, from this experience is we are too loud to stop and think about how we're affecting other people. I feel that society today isn't connected. We never talk publicly about things that are bothering us or about our beliefs because we are too afraid that we are too afraid to be judged because of them. The fact is that society does judge us, but that's when we have to stop outside or that's when we have to step outside what's comfortable and find out what's right for us. Hi, my name is Daniel Tuvison, and this is my credo. In the beginning, there was nothing but a dot with almost no dimension. No time, no people, no things, just the dot. In a near immeasurably small amount of time, it expanded into everything. Time, matter, antimatter, and the universe came into being. 9.5 billion years later, the planet that we live on came to exist, and gradually over the last 4.5 billion years, it led up to everything that we now know on Earth. Almost every piece of what we have has been here and has transformed and recycled millions of times. And all of that brings us to this moment now. The reason why I'm bringing up all of these historical facts is to share the one belief that I have. It isn't about it isn't about an eternal heaven or hell, and it isn't about a belief that after I'm dead, I'll become some other creature. None of these have any absolute proof, and I can never fully accept them as my own beliefs. Many of my beliefs I, that I currently hold stem from how I matured when my brother turned 18 and moved out, and when I started high school a short time later. It was during this time period that I began to question my existence and who I was. I really began to ask whether or not anything is real and whether or not I am real. At this time, it really occurred to me that nothing is really certain. For thousands of years, people have been trying to figure out whether or not anything is real or just some grand lie. In the past, people like Rene Descartes have tried to prove to themselves that existence is certain with such ideologies as, I think, therefore I am. Over the years, people have considered this quote and have found that even thinking doesn't necessarily mean existence. Although I have very little belief, I do have one belief. I believe in transcendence. I know that when I am dead, my body will not disappear, but merely transform. My body will disassemble into its more basic form and follow the natural law of entropy. And as the universe has done with my body, it will eventually disassemble the Earth, our solar system, and our galaxy. And all of our universe will be an infinite field of energy. 
That is my one and only belief that I know I will hold on to forever. Hi, my name is Max Schmitz, and this is my credo. The meaning of life for a person can be a goal like achieving excellence in what you do, like writing or playing an instrument or sport. In my own life, I have an appreciation for accomplishment, for striving to achieve a goal and being recognized for achieving it. For example, if I set a goal for myself of getting some free time, and I do my chores or homework and get the free time, I feel proud. I feel most happy when I've done something that I thought I could never do, but I succeeded in the end. I know that I will not always achieve every goal, but even in that, there is an opportunity to learn. Sometimes things will not always go the way you expect them to, and there are usually reasons for that. We all will make mistakes, but every problem has a solution, so therefore my goal is to find those solutions. In any culture, people know the difference between right and wrong. People learn this from the mistakes they make or the consequences of those mistakes. I think that I have the responsibility to be respectful of myself and others. Characteristics I appreciate, seek, and admire in myself and others include kindness, compassion, confidence, open-mindedness, and calm. I seek to avoid being greedy, ignorant, or judgmental. I think that one person who has made a great influence on my life is my mother. The reason why is because she has helped me to make good decisions in life. She has taught me to take responsibility for my actions and how to be a gentleman. One time she taught me an important lesson is when she told me that having electronics such as iPods and computers are a privilege, not a right. Another time is when she helped me to stop someone who was bullying me. I appreciate both of my parents' kindness and good sense of humor. Another person I admire is the great historical figure Galileo Galilei because he believed that God is everywhere in the universe and that mankind is not at the center. Because of this, he inadvertently created the doctrine that a person cannot be at the center of the universe, which means that things will not always go your way. <laughs> I feel that the fact that there are so many things being created, no matter what it is or where it is, gives me a sense of awe and wonder at the universe. Another sense of awe that I get is when I think about how big the universe really is. What is the meaning of life? That is one of the hardest questions to answer. Some people think that the meaning of life is to learn. Some people think that the meaning of life is to be happy. Some people think that the meaning of life is to have fun. I would agree with all of those. So there is not just one meaning of life, but there are many. Everyone has their own meaning of life, no matter who they are. I'm still searching for the meaning of my life, and I will admit that it is hard to find, but fun to keep looking. It's a big universe, after all. My name is Corin Dewey, and this is my credo. Credo is originally a Latin root meaning believe, truth, or credit. The O on the end indicates the I part of I believe. To start off, I do not believe in any God. I understand that humans did not know why Earth was created, so they generated a God. But science has proven this theory wrong. We humans have learned how we evolved over centuries, but still so many people believe in God because they are afraid of the unknown. Aside from my opinions, I accept other people believing in God because everyone should be able to make their own decisions on belief. Sometimes people are so obsessed over religion that they place it in front of their life. I once read a book of stories about people's experiences with guns. One girl's father had accidentally shot her mother when he was drunk one night. They quickly took her to the hospital and had a high chance of saving her by blood transfusion, but since they are Jehovah's Witnesses, that goes against their religion. This was horrifying to me, how a family with, that was all right with letting their mother die because their religion got in the way. Religions were created long ago to explain why the earth was earth and why people were people. I believe that religion is an excellent community gathering and a source of relaxation, but it should not come before or in between relationships and life. Religion is not the purpose of life, at least for me it isn't. To me, the purpose of life can be whatever someone wants it to be. It all depends on who the person is and how they want to live their life. My 
My purpose in life is to be the happiest person I can be while having the utmost amount of fun. To do that, I feel I need to be successful. Right now, I think that I'm very successful. I play for two baseball teams, a soccer team, and I take part in the school jazz band. Those activities are what I value most in my life right now, not including family, friends, and school. The purpose of my life is to be content, have an enjoyable life, and to be successful. Many aspects about me give me my purpose in life. Music, sports, friends, family, school, and anything that I can explore, explore or try out gives me a purpose in life. In general, anything that I enjoy is what gives me meaning to my place on earth. I believe in equality, but if one being works harder than another does, they should receive more of a reward than the other should. This is why ideas like communism do not work. Humans are a competitive race, so there has to be incentive for people to work hard. Equality of opportunity is the part of equality that I believe in. Everyone should get an equal chance in life and should not be discriminated in any way. I also believe in integrity and people being true to their word. So many people lie for no good reason at all. I admit that I do slip up sometimes and don't act in the most honest way, but everybody makes mistakes. People just need to realize how they made the mistake and why they should not commit it again. This also relates to the topic of human nature. Human nature includes decisions that people make, and humans can choose how they want to act in situations involving integrity. I believe that everyone has some good in them, but several people obviously contain more evil. This is why I have a keen interest in the yin-yang symbol. It represents how there is always good and evil, but there is always evil and good. There is too much harm done in the world today, and even those people you think might deserve it have feelings and at least someone that loves them. There may be many bad people in the world today, but every single human being has a good side and the right to enjoy life. Being happy can be part of someone's good side. I feel most happy and fulfilled when I'm playing the guitar, when I score a goal in soccer, when I eat good food, when I get a good hit in baseball, when I'm hanging out with friends, and especially when I do not have to think about school. Sometimes I get overworked by too many things in my life at once, and I become stressed out. Stressing out can make me hungry, and when I'm hungry, I feel frustrated and distracted very easily. So when this happens, I just try to think of what makes me content, and I try to act on it. Success in sports is one of the main activities that causes me to relax and be joyful. One man named Joey Votto definitely has success in baseball. Due to my interest in the sport, I am particularly aware of Cincinnati Reds' first baseman and how dedicated he is to the sport he loves. When Joey was young, he would have a catch every day with his dad in the backyard. He grew up in Toronto where not much baseball is played. He was one of few teenagers to play ball in high school, so every day after school, he would practice with the others. Votto's dedication to the sport is the aspect I admire most, but I also aspire to his hard work. He has been in the major leagues for a few years now, and he busts himself to the limit. Coming from a place that scarcely played baseball, he fought to achieve what he desired and is now one of the most talented first basemen in the Major League Baseball. Others that I look up to are John Lennon, Jimi Hendrix, and Jackie Robinson. Because of Lennon's dedication to peace, Hendrix's dedication to music, and Robinson's dedication to overcoming discrimination. I'm still not sure what I want to do in the future, but I know that I want to have the same dedication as Votto and the others with whatever my occupation may be at the time. There was one event this last summer that changed my views on life during a meeting for worship. Meeting for worship is a time when all campers have a silent half hour with the rest of camp just to think about life. People are allowed to stand up and share what they are thinking if they want to, but not many people do. This past summer, there was one meeting where more people than ever before stood up and shared their thoughts with the rest of camp. This event changed my perspective on the meetings and caused me to make a goal of standing up and speaking for the first time next summer. The camp director, Travis, always stands up and speaks out his mind during the meeting for worships. He is extremely caring, but at the same time knows when he can joke around with other campers. This, these meeting for worships with Travis made me realize how everyone can have a different opinion on life and how they want to live it. Some are more spiritual than others, some are adventurous and want to do as much as possible, and some are indifferent or have not made their minds up yet. Due to Travis, I have realized that I want to live life to the fullest and have the most fun that I can because this is what I believe life is all about. There would be no point to life if one did not enjoy it. Sadly, many people don't due to a variety of reasons, which is, my, my, which is why my goal in life is to be successful in as many aspects as possible so that I can enjoy everything possible. This is what I believe. Hi, 
My name is Monet Quine Sturge, and this is my credo. What do I believe? I believe in honesty, trustworthiness, graciousness, kindness, equality, and justice. I try to develop these qualities in myself, and I am I and look for them in others. My parents let me make my own decisions. They trust me to do the right thing and learn from my mistakes if I do the wrong thing. I try to be honest with my friends when we are, when we are talking about problems they have. I want my friends to be honest and trustworthy when I tell them my problems. Friendships are one of the most important things in my life. My best friend, Fadia, had taught me how to be a friend and how to make new friends. To me, I believe the purpose of life is having fun, but also having and reaching your goals. One of my goals is to be adventurous and try new things. I went to a different country and I tried lots of new things. I was nervous and excited, but I was on an adventure and having fun. It was the best, and I was sad when I left my new friend. I am happy when I, when I am doing things I like. I like hanging out with my favorite friends. I feel happy and fulfilled when I write songs, play my guitar, listen to music. In the summer, going to the beach is where I am happy. I sit on the beach in Rehoboth, Delaware with my shirt and a book and read in the sun or go on the boardwalk. Ten years from now, I would like to help kids in foster care because I know how hard it is for some kids. I have a better family now, but it was hard and confusing. I want to help kids have fun and learn about their feelings. I want to help them achieve their dreams. I would like to use my music and acting and make financial donations to, to support the gay rights movement and stop bullying. I want people to be happy, have fun, and enjoy life. Don't dream, do. Thank you. member of our coming of age class couldn't be here today. His name is Austin Adams and we're going to read his credo for him. My credo is going to tell what I believe in, but what do I believe in? Well, over my life I have started to understand the way and meaning of life. I have realized that there are many things to believe in, but there is always going to be someone to disagree with something you believe in. You shouldn't change because of someone else trying to control your life. I guess I guess that is one of my beliefs. Always be yourself and control your own life. But you should, all, you should allow people to help. I have seen parents control the lives of their children completely, and those children have turned into someone else and not themselves. I have really great parents and friends that don't completely control me, but try to prepare me for my future. They have done a really good job. Because of them, I have become a better me. I believe that the purpose of life is to live a life that will make you realize who you are. Your family, friends, careers, and environment make up who you are. I believe people don't choose to become a good or bad person on their own. I think that if parents and friends are always stealing and being violent or breaking the law, the child will grow up thinking all that is good, not bad. Okay. I believe good people are caring for one another kind to others. They are trustworthy, trying to be fun or sometimes serious when they need to be, and respectful. That's a lot to be a good person, but I believe that everyone can be that if they try hard enough. People who have done bad things in their life can change into a better person. I know that all of this will probably change as I'm growing up and learning more about life, but for now that is what I believe, and it won't change because of someone else. I will choose what I believe, I will choose how to live my life, and I will choose who will help me with my life. In Live Every Voice and Sing, there is history to it. In 1900, James Roden Johnson, a principal of a segregated school, wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing as a poem to welcome a guest named Booker T. Washington. His brother, John Roderman Johnson, set it to music shortly after that. 
1919, it was labeled as the Black National Anthem by the NAACP and gave as a liberty cry for African Americans everywhere. Please ride as you are able to for our next hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing.